I did want to come back to yesterday's big story in my world, of course, uh, and just a big story in general, the talks between Philip Morris International uh, and Altria, which essentially is Philip Morris here in the U.S., but it's called Altria. Um, Altria is a smaller company. Yesterday we got news of talks of an all-stock merger of equals. The market started to react to that by sending the shares of Altria higher and Philip Morris International lower on the expectation it would be roughly a 50-50 split in the economics. Once we were able, or once I was able to get off air, actually make some calls, we were able to tell you that's not the case. They may be describing it as a merger of equals, but the fact is when it comes to the economics, it's not. They're basing it on the respective market caps of the company prior to the move in either stock before we started to at least hear some potential rumors of, uh, of said deal. And so then you watched Altria shares plunge yesterday. Philip Morris also down. By the way, they do need a shareholder vote on both sides of this. This morning, Philip Morris International shares, as you see, rebounding just a bit, but Altria continues down. This is a, a no premium, what they're calling merger of equals, because they will have split boards and split management, and they're still working through that. As I reported yesterday, perhaps as soon as a couple of weeks, uh, we will get a deal announcement. There did seem to be good momentum behind it. They've been talking, I was told, through the early part of the summer and picking up as that moved along. But the question, Sarah, is, is this going to be a company that together is going to be able to spend more on R&D, spend more on innovation, and compete in what, or I should say, innovate in what is a rapidly changing market given people are not expected or are expected to stop smoking the traditional way in greater and greater numbers? Well, yeah, consumers are shifting to, va to vaping and e-cigarettes. That's where the future is. And, and the cigarette sales are declining even further. There was also that big deal between bats and Reynolds American, which sort of changed the landscape and made made some bigger competition. I just wonder if the 13 billion that was wiped off the market caps of the combined companies yesterday made a difference in terms of derailing those talks it, that were publicly revealed. I don't know that I don't believe it made a difference in derailing it. Um, they could have perhaps handled. I'm not quite sure. You know, in terms of it getting out and and, and letting the market understand what they were doing. But you do need a shareholder vote, and there, you know, maybe there's going to be some question if this trend continues. Not the greatest way to at least have your first day of trading when people are at least understanding publicly what it is you're trying to do. And then there's also, this, first of all, there's, there's U.S. regulation questions about whether this deal kind of would, would be approved. There's always litigation around this industry. And then there's this sticking point where, so Altria owns 35% of Juul, yes. right? That, that's the popular $12.8 billion dollar deal early this year. Fascinating deal because they had no control whatsoever, no path to control either, which I thought was interesting given the premium they were paying. But they were also in that deal agreed to not distribute any other e-vapor products. And Philip Morris owns Icos, and I guess it's a it's a it's not it's a heating, that it's a he, they heat the tobacco not burn, burn it tobacco right. so I wonder if that is is allowed within that but, I believe but it is because they're is, talking about rolling it out yeah. here and globally obviously as Philip Morris already that's planned. the future products that's that's the key right These it is they spent six billion dollars on that but the thinking behind the deal is that they're going to need to spend a lot more yeah. money on the I next mean, generation to and me the next that's generation. a mismatch in terms of shareholder base what they're there for which is cash cow dividend yield just harvest this whatever declining business we have and now you put these companies together even though the industrial logic so to speak is really compelling everyone would probably agree it doesn't necessarily make sense to have two uh, kind of separate public companies different parts of the world now it's about investing it's it's almost like you know legacy media yeah sure you got to invest a ton but you're not guaranteed anything on the other end Right. I mean, listen, there is some, it's somewhat analogous to CBS and Viacom, given the two companies were together, right. were separated, and now are coming back together conceivably yeah. uh, in, order to, in order to have more scale in a yeah. rapidly changing Now, the core product is not bad for your health in as clear a way for media as it is in smoking. So there you go. It's not like the overall you know, world of true. consuming entertainment is that going is away. No, it's not. So, but people are doing it in different ways. That's a benefit for CBS Viacom. Yeah, they're vaping their media these days. <laughs>